up guys, Friday afternoon and we are loading up today. I've brought in a special guest for a guest appearance. I'm loading up. Everyone knows who he is. Christian, he's here today. What are we going to be talking about today? Uh, we're talking about shocks. We're talking about shocks. Now, Christian's been helping Dave out this afternoon, servicing the X1H. And the question was just raised, how does a shock absorber work? How does a shock absorber work? It goes up and down and does, uh, and does absorb bumps. Yeah. That's full. All right, video over. Thanks, Christian. <laughs> Thanks for coming in. Oh, done. Thanks, guys. Get back in here. Come here. We're going to cut open a shock today. That's what we're going to do. We're going to explain how a shock absorber works in really simple layman's term. We're going to have a look at the Cruise Master uh, shock absorbers. These shocks we've been running for five years, six years. Um, really good bit of uh, kit. On the X1s we run a dual shock absorber. X2s we run singles. We run a dual really as a safety mechanism. Um, the dual shocks is probably a little bit of overkill uh, for the X1, but look, let's talk about that as we go. Let's go over to the bench. Let's get oily, let's get dirty, let's get some tools out. Let's grind sparks, try and blow something up and cut open a shock absorber. All right, so here we go. I'm all set up. I've got tools all prepared. I'm waiting for my sidekick, dude. Come on, hurry up, get in. <laughs> you look awesome. Yeah. Safety is paramount when we're working in the shed. Yeah. How's his little kit looking good? Come on, stop mucking around. Put that away, get in here. Yeah. Let's do it. All right, tools. So I've started off, I've never done this before. All right, so bear with me. This is either gonna be really awesome or this is gonna go pear-shaped. Now, these things are obviously filled with uh, hydraulic fluid inside of the shock. Um, maybe we'll quickly talk about the first purpose of the shock. Number one priority of the shock, um, it's a shock absorber, which is exactly what the name implies. Number one priority is to keep your wheels on the ground. If you've ever seen like a leaf sprung trailer bouncing across the Simpson Desert, because there's no control over the rate of the spring and how the spring uh, oscillates underneath the trailer. What the shock absorber does is it controls that oscillation of the spring by slowing the spring rate down, moving up and down through the stroke. And we'll talk about that a little bit more as we cut this thing open. So that's its number one priority. All right, mate, get in here. Let's get this done. Now, like I said, I've never done this before, so this, there's a chance it's gonna go pear-shaped. Let's get a hole in there and let's, um, let's see what happens. All right, number one. So I reckon we bang another one in up here and then we drain the fluid out of both of the chambers. Okay. Good, see that? See all the fluid coming straight out the bottom? Nice. So we'll get rid of most of that as we can. Do you know what the hydraulic fluid's in there for? Um, help dampening. Exactly, so what that fluid does is when you see inside where that piston is, as the piston runs through the fluid, the fluid, the yeah. fluid is actually what's slowing that piston down, that hydraulic fluid. And that fluid heats up, and then that heat expands and it comes out the side of the tube. So you know when we overheat a shock? Yeah. You've been there for a shock overheating? Yeah. You've seen that yeah. happen before? Yeah. yeah, it gets way too hot and just destroys and warps the shock. Yeah. Let's cut it. So these ones here, buddy, these are a twin tube shock. Yeah, sweet. So see how you've got your outer tube? So this is your oil reservoir. So when it bypasses the piston, it goes into the outer tube. When you've got a mono tube shock, they don't have twin tubes, so the piston will be sitting straight inside here. Oh, yeah. So now I'll get you to drain the oil out of this. Okay. We might have to cut a little bit more out so we can access this, because that tube's a little bit smaller than I actually thought. And then we'll cut the window and then we'll see exactly what's inside. More cutting. All right, we're in. That took a little bit more work than expected. Yep. Right? Yep. But we're finally in there. What I didn't want to do, I didn't really want to destroy this piston and cut inside this, so it took us a little bit longer to get in there. What you've got inside, I might just compress this down just a little bit. So obviously the shock absorber is, is joined to the, the bottom of your trailer or camper trailer or vehicle at the bottom. 
and you've got another eyelet at the top. The eyelet at the top is probably the most important one because it goes down this piston rod and it connects to this piston uh, down here. Up the top here, this is just an, an open void. This is just a cover up here. But what you can see, what the shock absorber is doing as it's running up and down through uh, the stroke, is this is filled, this cavity inside, and this is a twin tube shock again. So inside you've got a cavity uh, filled with oil, and then you've got an external cavity. A mono tube shock only has one single cavity. Um, and I'll just briefly explain that again. So as the piston goes down and it moves through the stroke, so as it's in bump or in compression as, as it's going down, it's pushing all the hydraulic fluid, obviously right to the bottom of the shock. Now at the bottom of the shock, you've got a valve down there and the valve's job at a predetermined or preset rate is to let that oil bypass the first tube and go into the second tube. Now hydraulic fluid compresses to an extent, so that predetermining of how much oil the valve is letting through is controlling the velocity of the piston. So as the piston's moving really fast through that stroke, um, it's slowing this piston down. So what it's doing is it's stopping your spring uh, from jumping up and down inside of its seat. It's controlling that momentum um, of the spring. Now, when it goes into rebound, it does exactly the same thing the opposite way. So if it's down the bottom, it goes into rebound. As it's coming back up, the oil's getting compressed back up and it's bypassing back into this cavity in here. Now, you hear about things uh, like nitrogen filled shocks or external bypass shocks. Or air shocks or air shocks even for, a, and you can do this with compressed air like you do on a push bike, yeah. on a mountain bike, yeah? These kids know something, hey, they're learning some stuff. Um, there's so many different variations, but they're for a higher application. Now with all of the X1s, we put twin shocks underneath the X1, and effectively what that does is it keeps the heat uh, down on the shock, so it prolongs the life. Heat is the biggest killer of shocks. Obviously, the amount of friction that's caused inside here heats up that hydraulic fluid, and when it gets to a certain temperature, um, you get all sorts of failure. You get the pistons melt, you get the hydraulic fluid gets filled with air and it starts cavitating, so it stops doing its uh, job. Air will, will not work like uh, hydraulic fluid will. So there's all of those things that you need to consider. When it comes to picking a good shock, there's, I mean, there's shocks and there's shocks, and it's like everything you get what you pay for. Obviously, the twin tube is probably a really good middle of the range. Mono tube is probably bottom of the range. Twin tube, and then it moves into other external bypasses and remote reservoirs and all those sorts of things. Hold more uh, oil capacity to keep the oil, oil cooler and all those things. Um, you've got a heavy wall thickness on the tubes of these. But the biggest advantage, the number one advantage when it comes to the Cruise Master shock absorbers that you get with their suspension kits is that valving that I spoke about before is designed specifically for that suspension kit. So to carry 1.2, 1.6, two ton, three ton. So it's gonna tr control the momentum of your wheels moving up and down, and ultimately, keep your wheels planted on the ground. That is the number one job of the shock absorber. Does that all make sense? Mm -hmm. You already know all this stuff, don't you? Yeah. I think you probably know more about shocks than I do. Maybe another year you do the next shock video. Yeah. Hey? Yeah, maybe. Well, that's it, guys. So there's, there's a little bit about the Cruise Master shocks. Um, I hope that you've learnt something today. Look, I have. Um, pretty cool. I think we'll keep this hung up as a trophy. Yep. I think that's it. Friday afternoon, we're going to finish loading up, and we are out of here. Make sure you like and subscribe.